You might be surprised to hear that I think Honda Tarakatsu with Budoka Prime might actually be one of the best archer pairs in the game, bar none. Stick around in this video for a full rundown on the best Budoka Prime talents and pairings to smash your enemies. And before I begin, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, where your game knowledge can completely smash your enemies, even enemies that are more powerful than you are. This video is sponsored by War and Order, a city building war game where your game knowledge can completely overpower someone who is wailing in the game. I would know. I've been playing for two months and I actually just got beaten pretty badly in a little duel here where my opponent used their game knowledge to beat me even though I had a superior force. So I'll show you the video replay of this battle and what I want you to notice at the start of this battle is the formation they created with individual troops spreading out the enemy's troops so that I have to walk kind of all over the place. You see lots of little one troops over here making me run all over, spread my damage all over the place to those different groups. Uh, and then they just kind of pick me off at the end. So even though this opponent is unquestionably weaker than me, they outplay me through and through. And here's the part where you see me walk all over the place. I'll even put it at 2x speed and they just freaking pick me off, man. Wrecked. So if you're interested in playing a game where your game knowledge can outweigh spending by a pretty significant amount, check out the link in the description to play War and Order. We've even got a team here in Realm 1492. You can join us. The link is again in the description uh, to download the game. In Realm 1492, we have the number one alliance rank by power and also the number four Smash Squad Devious and Smash Squad Legends. Join us. Let's get right into it. We're going to review Boudicca's skills to refresh ourselves on why it is that these pairings are going to make sense. Then I'm going to go over her very best talents, and I think there are some solid options there. And then last but not least, we're going to go over the pairings, which I think are going to surprise you. And I'm going to talk about some pairings that I haven't heard other people talking about, and I will talk about the pairing that everybody seems to think is going to be the very best. So let's first review. The active skill, 2,300 damage factor, and increases the skill damage taken by the target by 35%, and reduces their march speed by 30% for three seconds. This active skill is god tier. If the rest of her kit was garbage, it wouldn't matter. People still use Tamaris, even though she's just okay otherwise in the open field, because of the skill damage taken debuff that she does. This is the reason why everybody is hyped about Boudicca Prime. The rest of her kit is, by the way, the icing on the cake. The skill damage taken debuff is the key. So, continuing to the second skill. The second skill is going to increase your archer attack by 30% and your march speed by 10%. The march speed is very important because archers are often lacking in march speed. Look at Esong. Look at Artemisia. Look at Amonatori. There are a ton of these commanders that are just missing the speed they need to do well. But there's more. And the second part of this skill is critical. When you are below 80% of units remaining, you get 30% defense. The weaker you become, the tankier you become. This is very important for the pairings. This is why I'm telling you about this and emphasizing this. Up next, skill damage taken reduction of 35% when you're in the open field. Does not work in a resource node, does not work in a garrison, does not work in a city defense, okay? Does not work in an Ark of Osiris structure. But when you are taking skill damage, damage for your troops' next normal attack is boosted. There's a 50% chance that you will boost the damage you deal by 25%. Uh, and there's a 25% chance that you boost the normal attack damage that you deal by 50%. This can trigger only once every 7 seconds. This is honestly very minor. The, the normal attack damage boost on your next turn is not the reason that you're using Boudicca Prime and does not in any way, in my estimation, really influence what pairing you will or will not choose. Although, normal attack damage boost, by the way, does mean that your counterattack is also elevated for that one extra turn, but I just don't think that's all that important in the grand scheme of things. And we've got a couple more skills here. The next skill um, is actually this one right over here. When attacking troops, this is the fourth skill, uh, troops receive healing factor of 800 after using an active skill and archers deal 5% increased damage to infantry. The healing effect can trigger only once every seven seconds. So I think you get the 5% increased damage to infantry all the time. And then also you get the healing boost every seven seconds at best, whenever you're using an active skill. Now the healing is really powerful. 
when combined with the defense boost because you're going to get tankier and you're also going to be restoring your troops. There are some commanders that are going to work really, really well with this specifically. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. And I want to hear your favorite Boudicca Prime pairings down below in the comments. Leaving a comment and throwing a like on the video supports the channel. Thank you. Up next is the expertise skill. Increases damage dealt by archers by 10%. I mean, obviously this is amazing. And something that will dramatically influence the pairing options is this right over here. When under control effects, the troop has a 80% chance to dispel them. Now, I want to see this in action before I say definitively exactly how it will work. But I will say that this is the reason why people really feel like Artemisia paired with Boudicca Prime is going to be god tier. And that is because, theoretically, the silence effect from Artemisia should be cleared off whenever you get hit with it, at least 80% of the time, by virtue of this skill right over here. Now, I want to actually see that in action before I say for sure that it works that way, but let's assume, for the sake of this video and the best pairings, that that does, in fact, work that way. Given all of this information about the way the skills work, there's a couple things you'd want to take away from this. The first is that being able to apply her active skill debuff more frequently is going to be really important. Generating rage is really good. This debuff is a part of why she's so powerful, so we need it to be active as much as we can have it active. And by generating more rage, you are going to heal more. And so if you're healing more, that's another indicator that you would want that faster rage cycle. There are a number of benefits. So commanders that would boost her rage or talents that boost your rage are really advantageous. Let me show you the two builds that I think will be best. This is the build that I think is going to be your number one option. And by the way, I'm showing you these talents on Cyrus because he's the exact same talent trees that Boudicca Prime has. That is the Archer skill and versatility tree. Now, the reason I really like this build is it's captured every single critical point within the Archer tree with one real exception, and that is the extra Rage Gen over here. Now, I just finished saying how important the Rage Gen really is, but by doing this tree and going for this offshoot in the skill tree, you get 6% more March Speed, which feels really important to me, and also you get extra skill damage. And I think in the grand scheme of things, yes, the Rage is really important, but probably not as important as the way I've configured the build right here, giving you that extra skill damage. Now, one build I think we're going to have to test to see if it is better for a murder ball and applying this debuff from Boudicca Prime is the full skill build. This gives you Feral Nature, which means you're going to fire off your active skills faster. And the problem is that sometimes some amount of your rage will be wasted. But when it isn't wasted, you actually are getting your debuff sooner, which means that all your other marches are going to do that 35% extra skill damage to the target which probably ends up just being worth it. So as a standalone march, probably this previous build is the better build, but maybe the full skill build will be better if you are in a murder ball situation. And now there are a couple other talents that I took off to the side here. I did get razor sharp rage gen. I mean, we're moving like fully all in on the rage generation plan. And then I do have one point over here in full quiver and a few extra points off to the side. I mean, you could reallocate these, but... I think this is generally where you might want to be, especially if you buy in to the debuff frequency being very critical, which also means you heal more frequently, by the way. The final build option I have for you is just a very slight modification. Instead of going for uh, Clarity over here, which is giving you the extra skill damage after using an active skill, Instead, you could say, you know what, man, I really just want that extra rage. And so the way that this build is carved out is that it goes and it puts the points in to get the extra rage per turn. But you still go and get the march speed, which I think for archers is so important. Like you're getting hounded by calves, man, and those calves are going to shred you. So having the ability to escape those situations it is so, so critical. That extra march speed there is, I think, very important. So again, when compared to this clarity build, I've basically transferred the sort of three points we have over here that gives you the extra skill damage into the extra rage. There's not that much of a difference in the grand scheme of these things between the two. But now, let me tell you the very best pairings. And I'm going to maybe build my way up to what I think the best pairing is. And why don't I start with the pairing that I think almost everybody is going to use, 
Boudicca Prime with Esong. Now, the reason that I think that most people are going to use this, especially when they're just entering Season of Conquest, is that most of those players are going to have an expertise Esong, right? Like, that's one of two commanders I think is a ultra-high priority. It's Alexander the Great, and it's Esong. And I've made that guide many, many times over. Cards up in the top if you want my investment order guide. So with that said, on my own restart project, that's what I'm going to use. But I actually think you can do much better than the Esong Boudicca Prime combo. Although, Esong is generating extra rage, which Boudicca really wants. If you have this pairing, I think you're less likely to need maybe that feral nature build that helps you generate extra rage. Also, Esong has always been lacking on the tankiness front, so pairing with Boudicca Prime seems like a good way to give him mobility, a little bit of march speed anyways, and also the protective tankiness and healing that you're getting from Boudicca Prime. But as I said, I think you can do much better. And if we look at what some of those better, more, I think, common endgame pairings are going to be, I think a lot of people who use Nebu Esong are actually going to carve Esong out of that combo and instead are going to be using Nebu with Boudicca Prime. The reason I like this is that you've got March Speed and Defense on Nebu. You also have sick AoE damage and really high single target damage as well. It's easy to forget 2,000 single target damage factor once upon a time was like really, really good, okay? And he's also got that AoE and he has a rage reduction effect, very powerful, uh, and also boosts your all damage by 15%. So I think this will become your replacement for Nebu with Esong is Nebu with Boudicca Prime, probably flip the order because you really want the Boudicca Prime debuff applied first and then boom, big skill damage to hit from your Nebu. Now, I also think at a roughly an equal ranking or equal strength is gonna be Cyrus the Great. And I have talked about Cyrus's virtues many times over, but the problem is that he is not tanky at all. So he often gets shredded in the field, but Boudicca Prime brings 35% skill damage taken reduction. 30% defense when you get below 80%, okay, and healing. And all of that is really critical with some of Cyrus's skills where he's going to do a bunch of skill damage back if only he could live long enough to do it. He also has a small rage engine generating 150 rage. That rage is split over the course of three turns, 50 per turn when he's expertised. So I think that that actually ends up being a combo that I personally might even use over the Nebu because I have several commanders now that do damage over time effects that I want to enhance. It's also a really good march to swarm a garrison with. My God, Cyrus and Boudicca Prime. Again, Boudicca Prime probably needs to be the primary commander so that you increase the skill damage taken by the target and then boom, smack them with that Cyrus the Great damage. But, but we can do better. And I think this gets really crazy. And I've seen some really awesome theory crafting around Artemisia. Now, this is the combo that everybody thinks is going to be the best. And I actually think you could do better than this even. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But I think the Artemisia people are predicting will be a god tier combo because of this skill right here. She makes it so that she will potentially self-silence. 50% chance that when her rage meter reaches 80, she silences herself for three seconds, but increases all damage by 50% for five seconds. That is insane. That is actually insane. So in this instance, theoretically, Boudicca Prime has an 80% chance to self-cleanse this silence when it's applied. And if that works that way, then I agree. This combo will be very good. You get 20% defense and health, a decent AoE, and also, boom, you make it so that 50% damage increase. It's actually kind of nuts. And... Rules of survival, 10% chance to do additional damage per second, damage factor 400 for three seconds. Instant proc damage added to your Boudicca Prime is really good. Now, granted, the reason I really dislike Artemisia is that she also increases the skill damage of your target, which makes her actually terrible to swarm garrisons with. Uh, and sometimes, depending on what you're hitting, this ends up really not working in your favor if your Artemisia march is really low and your enemy ends up being really high health. But with that said... What do I think is actually the better combo than the Boudicca Prime with Artemisia? I think your better pairing is actually Honda Tadakatsu. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I think this combo is actually insane. Now, we've seen this before. Nevsky with Honda was god tier. 
and really good in Canyon. Scipio with Honda Tadakatsu is amazing. So strong. And probably one of the better Scipio combos other than like Guan Skippy, right? So I think Honda Tadakatsu will work with Budoka Prime. And there's a couple reasons why that's the case. First of all, Honda is going to buffer the normal attack damage that you take for a little while, reducing that so that you don't like get wrecked really quickly. But when you get below 80%, all of a sudden, Boudicca makes you a lot tankier. Plus, her healing is going to make it so that you have a lot of staying power, relatively speaking, if you're not getting focused out. So that combination of things is going to make it so that she probably gracefully arrives at that 80% mark, gets really tanky, before you start getting swarmed out, which is pretty good. But also, this is going to make it so that when you get lower you do more skill damage. Well, that's amazing because Boudicca gets tankier and has healing as she's getting lower uh, troops remaining in the march. So not only is Honda giving you more troops, but as you get low, you're going to do even more skill damage. And Boudicca Prime does a lot of skill damage. 2,300 damage factor, right? That's the same damage factor that you have on Nevsky and people lose their mind over the Honda Tadakatsu secondary to Nevsky combo, especially for Canyon. So in the open field, I actually think Boudicca Prime Honda Tadakatsu are the way to go. The number one pair. And the only reason you wouldn't make this pair is that maybe Honda Tadakatsu is going to be somewhere else. And I completely understand that, man. He's so versatile that that is why he's really, really strong. Oh, did I mention he also reduces all damage taken by 5%? And he reduces March Speed. And this March Speed reduction will stack with Budoka Prime's March Speed reduction on her active skill. Seems really, really good. Oh my god, the 20% March Speed here. This, I think, is going to be the best combo. Now, if you didn't have Honda Tadakatsu, you could use the less impressive, but still really strong, uh, sort of a, uh, I'll say, free-to-play equivalent. It's not exactly free-to-play because you need a lot of gold keys to actually expertise him, but that's Mehmed, okay? This is Mehmed. Mehmed would be a great secondary. This works uh, for all the same reasons as your Honda does. It's just not quite as tanky, um, and I like the extra troops. I like the extra punch here. That's all good, um, and... Honestly, the bonus skill damage and health from the museum buff is really good, but I just don't quite think it's there um, compared to any of those other combos that I was sharing with you. I think those are all going to be stronger. So below the Boudicca Esong, I would put Boudicca Mehmed. Now, there are obviously other Archer Commanders that I could talk about a fair amount. I don't think I need to explain why. I don't think a Monotori is going to be all that amazing, missing the march speed and just not doing the sorts of things you want to be doing with your Boudicca Prime. I think that Gilgamesh could be okay, but his health debuff is already really duplicative with what we have on Scipio, and hopefully you've been investing in Scipio as a commander that is just honestly top tier, or even if you're using Ethelflaed, like his debuff doesn't stack with an Ethelflaed debuff. Um, now, I will say that his blood craving is really good, and it gets even better in this world where now, I mean, pretty much everybody should be thinking about Boudicca Prime, Scipio, and Nevsky, right? So you know that they're going to have that Boudicca healing probably somewhere in their murder ball as they progress through the season of conquest. But I just don't think this is quite there um, at the other the sort of power level of the other combos that I shared. And I will mention El Cid as kind of an interesting combo. He's got the march speed and he also has the damage dealt when you get low. So if you do get below 50%, not only have you gotten the defense boost from Boudicca, but, and you have healing, so you can sort of sustain. But also, you now get just a really big boost to damage. So if you get that low and you aren't getting focused, you actually get kind of nuts. I think that this is probably better than people will give it credit for. And I'll have to put a relic on him and do some testing uh, in 1v1s to see. But he's actually a very solid 1v1 commander. And this debuff right here... Uh, deals direct damage factor to the target and disables active skills and normal attacks for one turn. He's actually a good march to swarm a garrison with, weirdly enough. He's just not that strong overall in the grand scheme of things, which is why I think he generally falls by the wayside, right? He's got the march speed. He actually has the defense. He's just missing area of effect damage and his single target damage feels really low and people really discount the value of this utility even though it's probably better than people give credit for. Two last archers we need to talk about, and there's just so many of them. Ramses as a pairing, I think is solid. It's actually amazing how much skill damage taken reduction you get here. Another 30% skill damage taken reduction. So 
65% less skill damage taken from just your skills. Not to mention if you pick talents that also reduce skill damage, and yes, those talents were there on the Boudica in the skill tree. In fact, I can show you those talents right here. Uh, there, there they are, 6% additional skill damage taken reduction. So we're looking at a grand total of 71% skill damage taken reduction, which seems really good to me in the grand scheme of things, right? The downfall of Ramses is that he does damage over time on his active skill, which like, it's just okay in the open field. It's only a two second damage over time, so it could be worse. And also uh, the heal immunity gets, I guess, a little bit of extra life because Boudicca does do some healing. He's missing the AOE damage that I want to see. He's missing the sort of proactive march speed. He only gets march speed when you're getting hit, which is not the worst with Boudicca Prime. And actually the two of them together are going to do a shocking amount of total healing. I don't think it's going to be a bad pair. I just don't think it's going to be one of the most premium pairs that you should seek out to go and make. And similarly, although Tamaris is very critical and she probably should be in most murder balls somewhere, because you really want a strong rage engine on Boudicca, I feel like there's a lot of more likely pairs for Tamaris, even like Nebu, Tommy, and then Boudicca plus whatever else you're using might be the way to go if you're using two archer pairs. I guess theoretically, if you were only doing one archer pair, one of the best ways to go in that case might just be Boudicca and Tommy. And look, Tommy has almost no tankiness and she has no march speed. Good thing Boudicca brings both of those things uh, because Tommy really, really needs it. I would worry about how well you're going to handle cavalry, but... At least you reduce the attack of cavalry by 10% when they're hitting you. But man, you're still going to get hit pretty hard by those Nevsky and also XY combos. Unlikely, but still probably good combos would include like Julius Caesar. I already proved that Julius Caesar with Scipio was really good. If you're looking for more information on that, all the card up in the top, you can check it out. It's actually kind of crazy what you can do with a Julius Caesar. And for all the reasons that I share in that video, I think it will actually work with Boudicca Prime as well. Weirdly enough, high skill damage commanders, when paired with a commander that gives extra troops and boosts damage, turns out to work really, really well. In that case, probably Caesar needs to be the primary. For those of you just getting to Season of Conquest, if you don't have Esong and you're looking for an epic archer to pair because you don't have like an El Cid at 5511, then in that instance, I would probably steer you toward Herman. And the reason I say that is that he's got some march speed, and that is just so critical in the open field, especially with all these calves running around. Plus, he reduces the rage of the enemy and gives you some rage gen, which I think works really well. If you did want to use an unmaxed Boudicca Prime as you're leveling her up and powering her up, I do think that would be perfectly fine. Uh, the way you would do that is 5-5-5-1 five, 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 in an ideal world. I guess you could just max the first two skills, and she's very usable at that point. You'd probably just pair her with Esong, presumably, and be off to the races if you're like just getting to Season of Conquest. But the reason that I say that the fourth skill is the one that I kind of care about the least is that, like, look, I, I like the healing and I like the damage to infantry, but it's just not that important in the grand scheme of things. And even with just one point in that thing, you still get a healing factor of 400, which is pretty good. And if we get a look real quick at the third skill, I mean, even just one point in that is 15% skill damage taken reduction with a tiny chance of getting some bonus damage or I guess a a chance of getting the bonus damage and it's a small amount of bonus damage, whatever. You get the idea. What I would not do is try to skip the second skill, which is giving you 60% of stats and 10% march speed. <laughs> and that's maybe an oversimplification because some of those stats only kick in when you get low, but that's when you need the defense the most, isn't it? If you enjoyed the video, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. And also consider downloading War and Order. The link is in the description and simply downloading the game supports the channel, but I also think you're probably going to enjoy it. It's free to play. It's a city building war game. And well, you can check it all out on my second channel as well. Cards up in the top where you can see more detailed videos about that. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom and leave a comment with your very best Boudicca Prime pairings.